Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Joelle Simone Anthony. I'm also known as the Grave Woman. And if this is your first time here, I want to go ahead and ask that you hit the subscription button, like this video, and share this and any other content from the channel that you find interesting, insightful, or helpful with at least three people. So as you can tell from the title of today's video, we're going to be talking about four things to never do when someone passes away. Number one, which is never feel pressured to respond to anyone or make decisions. When someone passes away, a lot of times um, we're bombarded with phone calls, we're bombarded with questions, even from funeral professionals. And one thing that should never happen is that you should not feel pressured to have to respond to everyone, to answer to every phone call, to reenact whatever it is that happened to the individual that passed away, to discuss details, or to sign anything or make any major decisions right away. If you need to take a moment and let's say someone passed away at a hospital and you're being pressured by staff to make a decision about a funeral home or if you're being pressured to you know, use a certain funeral home or being pressured to sign any document saying that, um, okay, you want embalming or you want cremation, just simply say or feel comfortable saying, you know what, I just need a minute to make my decisions or always feel as if you can consult with someone that you trust um now when i say pressure i mean like you're feeling pressured like you have to make this decision right now though it is a very time sensitive time you should never feel as if you're being made to do something that you do not want to do whether it's from hospital personnel funeral personnel family members and friends or even from within yourself. Um, it's okay to let the phone ring and go to voicemail. It's okay to call people back. You don't have to feel pressured to text or respond to anyone that isn't critical in the, your decision making process. It's your right to take as long as you need to process what's happening and to also make the decisions that you're going to be happy with in the long run. And it's because of this pressure that sometimes experience by grievers that I always encourage pre-planning. And if you wanna learn more about pre-planning, I will leave a link or a little box for you to click somewhere up around here. Number two is to always go with the first option. Now, by this I mean, we're gonna go, by this I'm gonna revisit what I said about hospitals, nursing homes, and places of death. A lot of times these institutions have preferred funeral homes that they work with or contract with which there's nothing wrong with a lot of times these are pretty prestigious funeral homes and establishments within the community but you don't have to go with whoever is being presented to you especially if there's no pre-planning in place and if there is no um if there's no connection that you have with that institution either through your family through your job your church or whatever it's your right to choose your funeral service provider and unless there's a pre need contract in place you don't have to go with whoever the first option is that's presented to you. also at the funeral home you don't have to go with what the funeral directors are suggesting you can ask questions always ask to see the gpl which is the general price list don't just sign things blindly don't just allow your emotions to cause you to not pay attention to what's happening Always try, if possible, to take someone with you that you trust to listen and process the information and give it back to you. Because a lot of times when we're grieving, we miss out on key things or, you know, we're signing things and not really realizing what we're signing. So don't always feel as if you have to go with the first option presented to you and feel like you can ask questions because you can. It's your right. The third thing that you never want to do when someone passes away is spend emotionally or overspend emotionally. A lot of times, especially when there's been strained relationships or a death occurs, you know, completely unexpectedly, we have a tendency to overspend maybe on flowers or a certain casket or a, you know, family vehicles or catering or just overspending out of emotion because we feel like 
I wasn't able to do this for this person when they were living so I want to go ahead and give them the best funeral that I can afford and not saying that having a nice or expensive funeral that there's anything wrong with that but again I always encourage pre-planning because even if you aren't able to begin pre-funding your funeral you have written down in paper or at least in your mind that okay this is what this person wanted having that conversation with parents and children and you know other family members is vital because it sets the tone and in a lot of time it, it a lot of the time it can eliminate emotional spending and the final thing that you never want to do when someone passes away is be afraid to speak up about what your desires are or what your needs are a lot of times I can't tell you how many times I've been in arrangement conferences with widows with parents of deceased children or with anyone making arrangements and you'll see the person who's basically taking the lead on making the arrangements whether it's the next of kin or the um, the administrator of a will they're just kind of being you know sheepish and looking down and they don't want to speak up especially when there's many family members involved and everyone has an opinion you can speak up especially if you are the person who the funeral professionals are looking to to give the final words on decisions you don't have to go along with what everyone else wants just because it's what they want if it goes against what you know the person wanted or if it goes against what you can afford or what you just want I'm not saying or trying to um, encourage fighting or discord between family members, friends, and people making arrangements together. But I've seen it happen so many times where people are afraid to speak up for what their true wishes are or to stand up for the true wish wishes of the I hope that this video has been helpful. I'd like to know what other things you guys think um, should be things that should never be done when someone passes away you can use the comment section below to leave your insights and your input and you can also contact me directly at thegravewoman at gmail.com my website is www.thegravewoman.com live life love hard and i'll see you next time